Hello and welcome to the Shiki Science Show, where in this video we're going to talk about a human study into the biological impact of intermittent fasting and in particular some of the protein changes that were observed. And so these results were published in a paper that came out at the start of this year with a very long title. Intermittent fasting from dawn to sunset for 30 consecutive days is associated with anti-cancer protein signature and upregulates key regulatory proteins of glucose and lipid metabolism, circadian clock, DNA repair, cytoskeleton remodeling, immune system and cognitive function in healthy subjects. But unlike the length of that title, this video will be short and sweet and will just cover the key points from this study. In particular, first we'll just look at intermittent fasting and then we'll look at the setup of the study and what they examined, what they saw, and then we'll talk about some of the limitations and my own thoughts for the study. But firstly, let's look at what intermittent fasting actually means. So there are different forms of intermittent fasting, but they're all united by the fact that intermittent fasting is a strategy for meal timing scheduling. So there's quite a bit of hype around intermittent fasting because there are some studies that show that time-restricted feeding has benefits and that comes down to the connection between timing and the circadian clock or the circadian rhythm that I have spoken about before on this channel, which is the daily fluctuations in selectivity and physiological responses. And so the connection between intermittent fasting and circadian rhythms is the idea that maybe when we eat could have importance. And supporting this are studies that have been conducted in mice that have shown that mice with disrupted circadian clock rhythmicity can result in increased risk of cancer and metabolic diseases. But the important and key thing for this motivation for this study is the fact that time restricted feeding in the mice could reset the re disrupted rhythm and actually protect against these diseases. You can read about more of the results from one of the studies in this paper here and in particular I want to highlight that they did this without reducing the calorie intake which is important for when we get to the study setup and that was also done in Sachin Panda's lab and he has a book called The Circadian Code, I think that's what it's called that I read a year ago and it's actually quite interesting. If you're interested in this topic, I would definitely recommend reading that. Anyway, now that we have some understanding of why they wanted to do this study in the first place, what did they actually do? So as I said, this was a human study and they had 14 participants and they were all healthy subjects. 13 of them were men and there was one female in the study and the average age was 32. And so, each of them fasted for more than 14 hours a day for 30 consecutive days. And so if we look at this diagram here, the fasting period actually took place during the daytime. So they would eat pretty much when they wake up and eat again before bed. And then during this fasting period, they weren't obviously allowed to eat or drink and that included water. So to understand the biological impact of this intermittent fasting, the authors took serum samples that they got from the blood of the different subjects and they did this before the, the 30 day fasting period. They took another sample during the fasting at the end of the fourth week and then they took a final sample one week after the fasting period. So what the authors did with these samples is they looked at the proteins that were present and then by taking them at these different time points they could see how different proteins changed over time and whether they increased or decreased in the amount. And then based on those correlations they looked at the literature to see if the changes were either good or bad in response to different metabolic and other diseases such as cancer. So for example if let's say protein X was really high in a tumour and they saw that protein X went down during the fasting period, that would be a benefit as opposed to a detrimental impact of the fasting. So what did they see? So this is some of their data that they collected. And this plot basically shows by how much different proteins either increased or decreased from before the fasting to during the fasting period. Well, technically these are the genes that encode the proteins. So the first one I circled was APP, which is the amyloid precursor protein, which is associated with Alzheimer's disease. So they saw that go down after the fasting period. And another one I've highlighted is LATS1, which is thought to be an anti-cancer gene. I've also circled NR1D1, which actually encodes one of the circadian clock components, which they saw go up during the fasting and they've also highlighted a protein involved in the insulin response 
So I mean, I could go through each gene by gene and tell you what they saw, but I can't be bothered basically. So I'll just generalize what they saw. And after, from the 30 day fasting, they saw associated changes within the proteome that was protective against cancer, obesity, diabetes, and metabolic syndromes. And they also saw changes that induced the increase of proteins involved in DNA repair and the immune system. However, I think these studies have to be taken with quite a, a pinch of salt because they are just associations and that doesn't necessarily mean a causation or if it is necessarily beneficial or detrimental. And so besides that there are other limitations that the author acknowledged such as the fact that they only did this for 30 days and maybe they should try a shorter time period. There also wasn't a parallel control group where there was no fasting. And in addition, I mean, this was a very small sample size. There was only 14 of them, and there was <clears throat> a lot more men than female. And they only looked at the serum changes, and there are other different factors that they should consider and look at as well. And as I said at the start, there are also different methods of intermittent fasting, and it would be pretty interesting to compare two of them together. In particular, because the 14-hour method that they chose here is actually quite stringent. I don't think stringent was the right word, but they also couldn't have water. I mean, it seemed quite tough. Um, anyway, they did see proteomic changes, and I think that goes to show that there definitely is something going on with time-restricted intermittent fasting. And I think yeah, it'd be really interesting to see more research when it comes out. And so, as always, I hope you've learned something, and thanks for listening.